glass. Now this outlet is made by Lightyear and there's two different versions of that. One like this where you have full power all the time and then one where you have one side that's actually controlled by a wall switch. Also this outlet kind of solves the great debate. Should you put your ground prongs down or up because it's got both of them. You can actually put one with ground facing down. Maybe you had a large converter box or a wall wart. You need some space and then you put the other one facing up on top and then that gives you a little bit more separation than you get in a standard duplex outlet. But I was a little bit skeptical. So what I want to do today is go ahead and cut open this outlet, what is on the inside, and then also run a duration test where we max this all the way up to 20 amps, which it should be able to handle, even though it's a 15 amp outlet, to see does it heat up. The way we'll be putting load on is I have two space heaters, so the same type of space heater, one for each one of those. And then we have heat guns, which allows me to kind of modulate the wattage. So we're gonna try to get up to 2400 to 2500 watts and run that for about an hour. And then every 15 minutes, I'll take this little FLIR thermal imaging camera that goes in the end of my iPhone, and I can actually pop off the back of that metal junction box and then get a real good look right at the back of those outlets to see how much they're warming up, if they're about the same, or are we starting to see quite the difference between the two? The lids are on, and for the the ground side, we're about 27 50 watts at 120 volts, that'd be right around 23 amps. And then the light ear side, the test one that we're doing is 2550, that'd be about 21 amps. So let those loads go ahead and run for 15 minute intervals and try to get about an hour out of them. In the meantime, let's open this guy up. A few more little clips and we can pop that back housing off and really see the internals. So looking inside, I can right away say this is a, a unique outlet. I've opened up quite a few different residential grade, a lot of commercial grades. Here's my favorite commercial grade. It's a Legrand 15 amp. And here we have more traditional. We have our neutrals on the one slide. So you have two different slots for neutral. We have our hots on the other side, the two slots for your hot. We have a ground that goes to your yoke and that would be your two different ground products. That's the traditional. This is a very nice, outlet. I like this one in terms of its robust construction. This lighter would be the, I would say the opposite of that. Um, so we have hots on the opposite side, right? Just a different design. And then they're actually connected together. So if we just connected one hot conductor in, we would power both sides. So all four different plug locations could be powered, but there's a wire that's soldered between those two that's internally. To me, very shoddy design there. Um, not loving that. And then we have our neutrals internal. Now this does have the back wiring feature, which I do like. So it has those plates that you can pull in with the screw terminals. I do like that. But notice the design here of our tabs and how that would actually hold a plug into place. That is not what's going on here. So here we have, this is where your neutrals would go. And it's just kind of a, a set distance and it has no spring force. You would just pass that in and if it ever worked loose over time, that's just gonna be a loose outlet very quickly. There's no spring capability kind of deflect, you know, and apply pressure to that prong and then let go once it's unplugged. This is kind of a static gap, which again, not an awesome design. Now for the data, Remember, we took four data points and you can see the results right here, both in table form and in graph form. We had the Legrand and then we had the Lightyear. And I'm probably mispronouncing that if you haven't guessed that by now. You can see the Legrand really kind of reached a plateau. And that was at right under 105 degrees Fahrenheit. And then the Lightyear did kind of step its way up as we got further and further along, kind of ending at 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Now the Lightyear is UL listed. I know that's a big question that you guys have, especially when you're buying things off Amazon. And we should put some context here. Even though there was quite the gap there between the Legrand and the Lightyear, you have to put that in perspective. Most residential electrical components are rated for an operating temperature usually well above 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So even though the Lightyear was much higher, probably a little more resistance in those connections creating a little additional heat, it still was probably far below any type of failure point.